everyone, this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica. So I'll be talking in this video something very interesting. Many of you are asking for how to write your statement of purpose. So statement of purpose is something that's going to fetch you uh, admission like PhD in India as well as abroad. Very specifically abroad if you want to do your PhD or your masters like MTech or MS in uh, life sciences like genetic engineering. Definitely uh, you need to know about the statement of purpose or a research statement so if you want to know that you can also watch out the video which will be available in Biotechnica how we can make a simplified statement of purpose so today in this video I'm going to talk about the top 10 precautions while writing your statement of purpose for your PhD admissions so I'll be talking in this videos what are the mistakes that you should never ever do when you're going to do your statement of purpose I'm going to show you one sample for you so that it's going to help you out so come along with with me and let's talk about this wonderful topic which is the top 10 precautions while writing SOP. So let's talk about the complete detail of what are the precautions that you have to uh, understand before making any sort of SOP. So first let me take you to the uh, first one what is the precaution you have to think yes so this is the most important thing I would suggest suppose if the deadline for a scholarship or PhD admission abroad or uh, MS admission and abroad many of them used to write their SOPs very late like suppose on one week before or suppose let's take some four days before just copying it pasting it from a Google and then taking a sample and then pasting whatever it is so it's not going to fetch you an admission in PhD or M MS if you're not going to put a lot of effort on writing your SOP. So never work on your SOP at the last minute. This is the most important thing. Most of them think that I've been rejected just because of the SOP. My admission has been cancelled. So that might be the reason. So the last work that you do it at the last minute is never ever going to work so never work on your SOP at the last minute like I'm going to show you something where you can follow this one and you can make your SOP the first day when you're going to start off with your SOP SOP has to be personalized for your uh, PhD admission or for your masters very specifically on the first day you identify your motivation for your higher study why you are applying for this one you just think about it on the first day and you can start writing your SOP I'm going to tell you how you can also make a bit gist of it and the second to fourth days you have to think about your strengths and your weaknesses and write write whatever is your strength and weakness you don't have to write an essay but instead write some pointers and on the uh, fifth day make an outline of your SOP so now you got to know why you are applying for this uh, admission or PhD admission or MS or for a scholarship and the second identify your strengths and your weaknesses your past experience of working in a laboratory along with the future goals that you're going to have everything think about it make it a pointer on on the day five we just make an outline of an SOP which is like a blueprint you just have to have some pointers and just think what you're going to add it everywhere and on the day 6 to 10, uh, 10, you have to approach your SOP. Like usually an SOP can be in the form of one page and always remember to make it in a three paragraph. So if you want to watch out the video, which is available, you can go and watch out. And on day 11 to 15, complete the first draft of your SOP, which means your draft is only ready. It's not completely finished. See, almost you're going to take 11 to 15 days. So do not start off your SOP preparations just be before some three to four days of your deadline for your admission. Never do that. So 11 to 15 days, complete the first draft of your SOP. And the last 15 to 20 days, you're going to do a final draft of your SOP and check it out by proofreading and also giving to people who can tell you some sort of corrections. So this is what you're going to do so don't be uh, starting your SOP at the last minute never ever do that this is the most important thing and brainstorming on your SOP at least a month yes of course I told you I gave you almost some 15 to uh, 20 days so always have a timeline of making your SOP you don't have to sit 24 7 and make your SOP you can spend almost like one and a half hours or two hours for making your SOP and never left for the 11th hour. Never ever do it at the last minute. This is the most important thing when you're going to start off your yeah, admission or application process you should take into consideration. The second one is going to be 
unimpressive or weak introduction and conclusion so i'm going to give you a gist how a S S sop going to be so there are going to be three paragraphs so in the first paragraph what you're going to write is you're going to introduce about yourself to the reader who's going to read your statement of purpose it doesn't need to be like your name along with your cgp where you have studied you don't have to include any sort of thing the main thing suppose if you're applying for a phd purpose you need to start off with a statement that described yourself along along with the research uh, or you can do something like when you are in the young age why you got fascinated towards the science or why you got fascinated towards some sort of research and which has made you land up to this position so you're just going to give the reader an introduction how you're fascinated towards to do your research which shouldn't be like your uh, graduation or your name never ever do it in the first paragraph so it is going to talk about your fascination towards the science that will become a sop introduction for you and the second one is definitely going to be uh, what exactly past experience of your research you're going to have and what is going to be the future uh, research that you are going to do with it. And what is this uh, department or the university or the scholarship that you're applying for, why you wanted to apply for. So what are the benefits that you're going to get through that, which is going to correlate with the area of interest that you have. Or else you can talk about the project that is actually present in the university, which can be beneficial for the uh, future uh, perspect also and it was a correlation of your past experience also so put all these things in the second paragraph along with your career goals uh, why you wanted to do and what how you can do it back again to the future or to the society and in the third paragraph what you're going to do is you're going to talk about the conclusion which need to be impactful like you're going to conclude saying that what are the benefits you're going to get everything you can you're going to put it and correlate the third paragraph with the first paragraph like a cycle like how we used to put a cycle and end it off like that right so what you can do is you have to talk about your future goals and the benefit that you're going to get which in turn will satisfy the dream that you have when you were a kid like you started getting fascinated so always have a correlation and have a co coherence from the first second and the third paragraph so do not ever start with some weak introduction because your reader is going to read it for some sort of period suppose if your introduction statement or any strong statement if you're going to have i'll show some examples also strong statement that you're going to have it's fine enough but if there's going to be weak introduction which talks about you where you study nobody would be in interested to read the next paragraph so never ever have an unimpressive or a weak introduction and a very bad conclusion never ever do it then how can you make it a bit good make impactful introduction suppose if you want to talk about a science you can put some statements that has described science very beautifully or you can start off with uh, how you got fascinated and why you want to apply so you can start in that way so make always an impactful introduction that the reader can get an idea about your interest and the next one is get hold of the readers the most important thing is first impression is going to be the best impression so you you need to hook the reader who is going to read your sop the next one start with a powerful statement that summarizes everything of you like your areas of interest your aspiration you don't have to put that but make it like a story that you're going to tell it your aspirations everything and wrap it up by mentioning what your expectations from the universities are and how you cope to contribute to the university so then tap into reality so this is what i told you you have to make it into a three paragraphs so always have a very powerful introduction as well as a conclusion the next one being dishonors never be dishonors when you're going to be writing your sop always be genuine enough whatever you have done whatever you know be honest enough to say everything you don't have to be dishonest at any point of time be curious you have to show them enthusiasm that you are interested in the work you're curious about it of entering into the university and joining their project or joining the program and you're very learning oriented person and always be humble uh, you have to show it in your word that you're not over exaggerating but being very honest because every reader can understand what you're really wanted to say honesty and authenticity do not ever copy it from somebody else or give a false information that you have not done it before never do that because people can really understand that the next one so the fourth point is going to be no jargons unnecessarily yes which means 
uh, we, we have a very bad assumptions like when you're going to write your SOP, if you're going to write some words which is not understandable, we think like, okay, we have written it something correctly. That's not the correct thing. Don't put words which are not understandable at all. Make some simple words with the normal synonyms. You don't have to put some complicated words. So no jargons unnecessarily. Don't put any complicated words which are very difficult for the readers to speak about when it comes to scientific terms or even come to vocabularies also. The next one, no boastful content. Like you can say your achievements, but you should not be boastful. You should not boost like uh, you have done this, that, Nothing to tell all those things because they'll get to know. So no boastful content at any time, but you can talk about your achievements, but not boastfully in a manner. This is the most important precaution you have to take. And the next important thing I'm going to show you is going to be uh, people used to do this mistake when they write an SOP, like they used to include their CGPA, they used to include their GRE scores, their TOEFL scores, their IL score. Never ever do that. Suppose if you have any sort of backlogs, or if you have a very weak CGP or G GRE, never ever have to write it over there in your SOP at all. Never do that. So do not mention your CGPA or your GRE IELTS or your score at any point of time. It's not going to be any sort of thing because your resume already is going to speak. So you don't have to put those things. So never dwell on your CGPA, GRE or your backlogs. Uh, if it's asked, in interview, then you can talk about this or else it's not needed. The next important thing is every scholarship or every university usually have a very specific word limit or a character limit or a page limit. Do not ever exceed the word or character or a page limit at any point of time. Some uh, university, when you're going to apply, you'll get to know because they will, when you are uploading itself, the file will not be uploaded because of uh, maximum words or characters. Some will be uploaded, but it's going to tell you how much characters or words you have given. So always stick on to one page of your SOP, how much ever word they're asking, write in that format. And how much is the character they're asking, do it only in that one. Always stick on to one paragraph, sorry, one page, a three paragraph, limit to 500 to 1000 words. Usually an SOP will be 500 to 1000 words only and make it very simple, concise and no clutter so make it clutter free so this is very important when you're gonna write your sop no irrelevant information you don't have to give information about yourself people used to get confused with a personal statement and a statement of purpose personal statement is going to be about yourself like you'll be talking how you land up in this position so that's going to be a personal statement how much you have went through and how you have come this far it's about only your stuffs but when you're going to talk about the statement of purpose, you are literally talking about the purpose to apply for this university or for the scholarship and how you make out of everybody to um, take you as a candidate for this position. Don't do any irrelevant information in your SOP, like no autobiography. You don't have to put your personal stuff here. No family background, no financial circumstances, no personal anecdotes. Nothing should be included here. So never ever use any irrelevant information. The next one is no informal languages or slangs. No, in, be professionally uh, writing your SOP. I'll be showing some examples also. Make it concise, clear. Use professional English language. Be polite when you're writing it. Your word should uh, represent the politeness and it has to be formal and it has to be respectful. It shouldn't be demeaning anybody. And no need of writing any abbreviations or informal uh, vocabulary like the words that we used to use in social media do not ever use some sort of informal vocabulary in your SOP also the next important 10th point is when you're going to done with all your SOP the most important thing I would suggest is proofreading your SOP you have to keep checking your SOP every time so revise it and if there's going to be any sort of editing that has to be done just edit this one so now I'm going to show you Avoid plagiarism. Do not ever copy it from any source and just paste it as such. So do not ever copy it. Avoid those plagiarism. If you have some doubt, you can go to plagiarism online checker and you can check how much you have copied or it's going to be correlated with somebody else. And you can check for it. Do not ever have any sort of copy things at all. And stick note to certain things. I'm going to tell you if you're going to do a font, do not ever write a font in bold. 
and shouldn't be italics also and do not underline it and do not highlight with some yellow red color and do not use some bright color always make it black and no fancy fonts so this is a very strict no if you're going to write your sop and then what to use then how can you make it so make a font size of 12 and you can use Arial, Verdana or Times New Roman these are standard form formats you can use fonts along with 12 size and don't underline it make it black color then always check for a few important things your spelling mistakes you can use Grammarly um, punctuation errors improper uh, grammar or repeat your points if you have you ever repeated some sort of points and again and again and if you're not finding the first paragraph with uh, coherent with the second one there's not a flow so just change it everything incoherent flow from one paragraph to another paragraph just check for it if it's so then you can uh, rearrange it back again so definitely the last important point is very important always go for uh, proofreading revising and editing do not ever submit your sop without proofreading also so i'm going to show you one uh, statement of purpose for a phd program so you can literally see the first paragraph and this is going to be the second paragraph and this is going to be the third paragraph you can see uh, the person is actually introducing about himself that his like towards science. So the first time I started into a microscope, I was transfixed by what I saw and a little terrified as well, which means he's starting with something to make a reader to read, which means he's talking about himself and he's going to correlate with the uh, middle school and how he started liking this one in the first paragraph, which is showing his who, who he is or who she is. In the second paragraph, he was literally talking about his previous experience in a laboratory and he's also talking about why he wanted to upload, uh, approach this university or he wanted this program because he is feeling that he, he or she needs to have some scientific research skill which also is interest in the infectious diseases and finally he's concluding the opportunity that he will receive through this and through this what he was going to do so that his goal is to become a scientist which he was thinking from the childhood days so this is how uh, the coherence has to be and if you want you can just take a screenshot and look at once so this is how you need to make a sop so today I've been talking about the top 10 precaution uh, while writing your SOP for your PhD admissions. So this is the most important thing that you have to understand and do your SOP. Do not be ever late. And if you find any more doubts or any um, clarification that has to be made on your SOP or when you're writing your SOP, what problems you're facing and put it in the comment section. Thank you all of you.